And we have entering the field of play now the VI 2 slash 3 competitors. Our first representative, representative is Carmel Bassett from Great Britain. And in a minute, we'll be seeing Claudio Carufo from Italy. Carmel comes in from the qualification round ranked number four. Claudio comes in ranked number three. Carmel giving a wave to her fans and the crowd and her teammates out there supporting her. And it's hot, so her coach is getting an umbrella out to make sure that uh, Carmel is going to keep cool. It's not typical it. British Isle <laughs> weather here. No, no, I'm afraid not. And we've had some terrible weather in Britain this summer. We have one day rain, the next day is sunny, the next mm -hmm. day is rain. But it hasn't been warm at all. We've come from 18 degrees to, I don't know, 30-something here, I think. Staying consistent with some of the rules that we've developed, and our World Archery has to do, has had to uh, develop a set of rules that will govern the VI division or the VI category. These archers, even though they do have some visual acuity, they are still required to use a tactile sight. So it levels the playing field in that we had mentioned before that there's a, a difference in acuity between two and three, but by requiring the use of the tactile sight by both divisions, it levels that playing field. It's they can still see the target and that might be to some might consider it an advantage, we don't. These athletes will do the same as the match just before us and they will have two practice ends of three arrows, this being the first. They will shoot simultaneously and once we begin competition, they will shoot the alternating format. And you'll notice that, uh, like we were saying earlier, Carmel's actually using a recurve bow. You are allowed to use either bow type mm -hmm. in this division. One of the advantages of using a compound bow at, at greater distances is that the mechanics of the bow allow the archer's arrow to fly at a flatter trajectory. At 30 meters, the advantage to that is not so evident that you cannot succeed, that, that an archer shooting a recurve can't necessarily succeed or wouldn't be able to succeed against an athlete shooting a compound bow. Janice uh, has, and I, I've known her for quite a number of years, she's gone back and forth. She started out with a compound bow and then she moved to a recurve. Had some success, but has recently moved back to a compound bow. It looks like Carmel has really got her sight in very early. Um, looks like she's popped an arrow into the gold there in her practice end. Well, that's got to be a confidence booster. You see that there's a chair just uh, one meter behind the shooting line. And that's so that the, uh, the archer can hear the coach when they're giving them a countdown for the clock. Now, there's a little bit of a different scenario here in that Carmel seems to have an assistant out there with her, but she's also got a coach in the box. So that then dictates what the assistant can tell her. The coach is giving her information about where the arrows are located, then all the assistant is doing or vice versa. If the assistant is giving her information about where the arrow is going, then the coach gives coaching advice. If you've just got the one person, they can do both coaching advice and arrow direction or arrow positioning. Yes. I think Claudio's uh, a little low with his arrows at the moment, but I'm sure he'll get that sorted out. We have a, a message online from uh, Dylan from the Netherlands, who loves world archery. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Dylan. I think you you were online le yesterday as well. Glad to have you back. All right, so uh, they've got their 10-second ready call to the second practice end. Opportunity to just do the fine-tuning on that site in the form together. 
Claudio has got a very simplistic sight. He's got uh, essentially a monopod that comes straight up or just a single rod that comes straight up from his tripod and just a, a plain uh, rod with a, a, a small ball on the end. The other archers that we've seen so far in the VI division have actually incorporated uh, essentially a recurved sight into their tripod. I think the advantage of the tripod system, if you're going to be flying across the world, is you can fold it up and put it in your suitcase. Uh, you got to have something that's going to be portable, for sure. The more simple it can be and the easier you can put it into place and adjust it, the better off you are. Claudio seems to be doing much better on this second warm-up then. That's for sure. He looks very ready. Again, nice arrow from Carmel. I think this is going to be a really good match. Looking forward to it. We also have a, a message online from the Steve Chan, who says, have I missed Roger Reese Evans? And I'm afraid, yes, you have. He was uh, he was in our last match, in our first match, in our first match today against Janice and uh, Janice Wolf of US USA, and she took the gold medal. Steve, you can catch it on a rerun on Archery TV, Archery TV, I think. It'll be in the archives. All right, arrows are pulled. Athletes are getting final instructions from the line judge, reminding them who's to shoot first, who's to shoot second as we uh, leave the practice scenario and jump into the match play. Got some good toe tapping tunes from our show producer, Amy, who's kept us singing and swinging in off times. Uh, she certainly has. There's been a good variety of music. Line judge has indicated that it is clear to shoot, and Claudio will start us off. Got his 10 second signal. That was a quick shot. It was. He looked a lot stronger with his bow arm on that shot than he did in practice. Yeah, he was. Oh, oh Mel answers good. very nicely. Oh. And she scores an eight. This is going to be a tight match, I think. He's up quick and shoots it fast. There were 13 seconds left on the clock. Carmel. Oh. Nice group for Yeah, Carmel. great group for Carmel. It's another eight. Carmel for the last arrow of this it's a set. five from Claudio. <laughs> and a nice group for Carmel. I think that's confirmed that uh, Carmel's going to take that first, that first set. Setting the tone for the match. Claudio's going to have to pick up the pace just a little bit to stay competitive with Carmel. Yeah. As we've pointed out a couple times in the last two days, the match isn't over until the last arrow no. shot. Anything can, is still capable of happening. I think Claudio's the uh, the higher ranked archer, but uh, that doesn't that doesn't mean a guaranteed outcome. As a reminder, these athletes, even though they may be shooting compound, are still shooting the set system that is, uh, is usually identified with recurve athletes. So it is the athlete who scores the highest raw score wins the set points. If they tie, they split the set points, so each athlete will end up with one set point. But it appears that Carmel has taken the first set and earns herself two points on the way. I think Darren, who's online, is uh, is enjoying the match. It's nice to see you here. Mm -hmm. 
schon auf Scheibe Nummer 2 beginnt. So, being the archer down, Claudio will start out the second end here and ha have the opportunity to maybe strike a little fear into Carmel. And he's drifted a little left with that first arrow. Scores a three. Wow, Carmel really, really seems to be shooting well at the moment. She's just put in an eight. Very nice, Claudio. Great return. An eight. I think Carmel's found her groove. I think she has. She's really on a roll at the moment. A nine for that second arrow. My goodness, Claudio is letting go at 15 seconds. It seems to be a, a, a format or a, a technique that is, is, is paying off for him. He's now shot a seven to, fi to round out his end. Nice job. And, yes. a, six and a six for Carmel, which gives her 23 points to Claudio's 18. Gives her two more set points. It's 4-0. Yeah, right. In order to stay in the match, Claudio is going to have to win two set points this next end. Sometimes, though, the when the pressure is on, the the real you know the archer comes to the fore. But it's equally when you're in front. You know, you, as an athlete, you're kind of thinking, "Oh no, I need to stay there. I need to stay there," and then the nerves can kick in. You know, it's it's never comfortable. <laughs> You'd like to think it would be, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, you would. And Pippa, you've just more or less recently retired. Have you officially retired? From I have. Yeah, I have officially retired from competition. I've had a shoulder injury that isn't really resolving, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to go to Rio, but I've run out of time for training. I think the thing is, you need to get qualifying scores, and. Uh, I know that I don't have enough season left to be able to get enough qualifying scores to qualify for Rio. So I've had to cut my career shorter than I really wanted. But you've had a nice long run. You've been to <laughs> how many Paralympics? I've been to two Paralympic Games, two, uh, Paralympic six games, World wonderful. Championships, there you go. 24 internationals. So I've had a really strong career. You've seen a bit of the world on your yeah, travels? Yeah, I have. But mostly green fields and archery targets and hotels. <laughs> All right, the uh, timing sequence has started for Claudio, and this is end number three. If we don't see significant change in uh, Claudio's scoring, uh, we could be he's just ending the match here. Yeah, he's just scored a six. That's all Let's right. see how Carmel replies. Oh, Carmel has put in a three. And that's what we mean by you just never know what might happen. Claudio responds with an eight. eight. Nice. Carmel just needs to keep it together. And there and she, she responds with an eight. That's another good shot from Claudio, another eight. I think it might just be a little, a little late, but there's still this last arrow. It could make a difference. Oh, and that's, that's gone low for Carmel, which All means right. that Claudio takes the next end. The next Claudio set. picks up two points, two set points, and the match is still alive. Wonderful. Oh, thank you, Hazel. Hazel has just said online, I should keep it going, and, and I should head for Tokyo. So thank you, Hazel. <laughs> Heads, heads bobbing up and down at the target there. Archer's agents are agreeing on the value of the arrows that have been entered in the electronic scoring system so far. The judge is confirming by radio back to here to event management. And the scores have been confirmed. And the match score is four points for Carmel to two points for Claudio. We will be shooting another set. It's always an exciting time in the match. Again, Carmel can still win with just taking the next end, but yes, it's it's tough out there. Uh, the indicator tells us 
both the indicator and the and the set points tell us that Claudio will start out this next match. Judge is making sure verbal instructions that everybody understands the the order of shooting, and he takes his place behind the line. And there goes the signal to shoot. Quick shot. He doesn't take much time. He gets his bow arm out fairly quickly. It's nice and it's strong out there. Oh, nice, oh, nice shot from Carmel. A nine. And Claudio opened with a four on that first arrow. Better. Responds with an eight. Carmel to shoot. Another nine. Very well done. Ah, uh, Claudio finishes with a three on his final arrow for a total end score of 15. One arrow left to shoot for Carmel. And she mm. has 18 at the moment. Really doesn't That's have to shoot that last arrow, but she did anyway. Yeah. And she takes the set point. Six to two. Carmel. Oh, look at that. Arms raised in uh, oh. celebration. <laughs> Hugs for the assistant. <laughs> oh, well, I don't think you'll see a happier face today. But I guess we say that for all the medal winners. We can. We've worked hard, put in a lot of hours to get here. Yes. She goes over to com congratulate her competitor, coaches and agents, and archers' assistants. That's the kind of sport we have, though. I think, you know, when when you have a match, and however the match goes, I think everybody will always congratulate their opponent. I think we have a really friendly sport. It's the professional thing to do, whether whether you're shooting for a medal or whether you're shooting for yeah. a million dollar prize. Mm -hmm. it, it, your competitors train just as long as hard as you yeah. have and deserve. But we have such an inclusive sport in we archery. Do. 